All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, we are a webinar. You can call us a webinar. We won't be offended by that. Um, and we cover anything that may be of interest uh, to librarians both here in Nebraska and outside the state. Uh, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, and but they are all recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and uh, see all of our, watch all of our previous recordings for all of our sessions going back to the very beginning. We do a mixture of things here, uh, presentations, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, book reviews, whatever, um, anything library related. We are happy to have it on the show. Uh, we have commission staff that do presentations, and we have uh, guest speakers that come in. And this morning we have a mixture, once again. Uh, we have sitting next to me, you can't see her, so I don't have the camera set up today, um, is Catherine Brockmeyer, who is, what's your exact title here at the moment? Research analyst. Research analyst, okay. <laughs> here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And she's in charge of our, one of the many things she's in charge of, one of them is our 21st Century Librarian Program, which is a uh, grant program we got from IMLS. And she'll talk to you all about that. And one part of that program is sending our um, library school scholarships recipient students to conferences that they might want to go to. And what we have online with us today, and we'll get to who that is when um, Catherine gets that, is some of our students that actually went to ALA Midwinter this um, summer in Chicago. And we're going to hear what they, um, about their experiences there, what they saw, what they did, how cool it was, I hope. <laughs> so I'll just hand over to Catherine. You can take it over and, uh, oh, here, yes. <laughs> take it away. Hi, good morning. My name is Catherine Brockmeyer. I work here at the Nebraska Library Commission. I am the grant manager of the 21st Century Librarian Scholarship Program that was granted to us by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And we started this grant program. We were awarded the grant program in 2010. And in 2011 is when we began to issue scholarships to students who were pursuing and still are pursuing um, certificates or degrees from the associate's level on up through the master's level in library science. Currently, we do offer scholarships to students who are studying at the undergraduate level, so at the associate's level, whether it's a certificate or degree, and also at the bachelor's le level, whether it is a degree, it also may be uh, an endorsement, a teaching endorsement at the um, undergraduate level, at the bachelor's level. And so you can see here that our next scholarship round, um, the scholarships are due on November 1st. And if anyone is interested in learning about the program, you can see here what the program is about, the description, and then if you would like more details, I would like to show you a little bit about the stipend. Aside from offering funding for tuition fees and course-related materials, we also offer a stipend program, which goes above and beyond the amount that they are awarded for a scholarship. Stipends are awarded to purchase a laptop, join an association, and or attend a regional or national conference. And so this is the second year that we've been able to send students to ALA, uh, the annual conference. Really? It's only been two? I thought it seemed like there's been so many more. <laughs> right. It was Anaheim the first year uh -huh. and then Chicago this year. Ah, uh, okay. So we've been able to send students to PLA. Oh, there's um, other conferences. Sure, AR, okay. uh, AASL and LITA mm -hmm. and Midwinter ALA. So the stipend description, as you can see here again, they are payments that are outside of their scholarships that are to enrich and enhance the, the learning, the formal learning experience. The laptops help students um, get up to date with their uh, technology and their connectivity since so many classes are online. Joining an association helps students network with other professionals and then attending a library conference broadens their horizons in terms of what is outside of the classes that they're taking and possibly even outside of the type of work that they think they might be interested in and might broaden their experience and help them see what some of the other possibilities are going to be. So we had five scholarship students who attended ALA this summer, and we're going to speak with three of them today. Um, we have Skye Siri and Odessa Meyer and Kim Green Haley. Uh, 
and they are going to talk about their experiences at the ALA. And what I asked of them to do, um, and any others who had attended, was to post in the forum of our Nebraska Librarians Learning Together Facebook page. Let me just go back and show that to you real fast if it'll let me go back. It's not behaving. But um, we have what's called a forum. It's a special app in Nebraska Librarians Learning Together. And so what I asked for the students to do is to post something they learned that surprised them, something they learned that they can apply to their work or coursework, and then someone that they met and what they learned from that person for their and their work or education. And then also if there was anybody from Nebraska that um, they were able to network with, we asked them to report on that. So Justine Gaiden also attended and she gave her report. Um, we'll look at Skies here in just a minute and then we also have one from Odessa and Maureen and um, one of our library system directors who also jo joined in on the conversation. Sorry if my scrolling has made you dizzy. So we're going to go ahead and pull up Skies report here and I will turn this um, over uh, Chris is going to turn this on over to Sky. Go ahead, Sky. You should be you're muted. You should be able to say hi. Sky, I'm going to let you speak for a little while because we have feedback. We're going to turn off our microphone and then I might have some follow up questions for you. Is that okay? Yeah, I'll just go through the questions that you guys emailed. Okay, great. We're going to be muted. Go ahead. Okay. Whoops. Hi. Sorry, start again. I am a, okay, hi, my name is Guy Siri. I am a library technician at North Platte Community College, and I went to ALA this summer. Um, you know, I've been to several big conferences before in New York City, um, Nashville, Tennessee, and ALA in Chicago was way bigger than I ever imagined, ever. There were so many people there. Um, between the librarians and the vendors, and um, the conference center itself was ginormous. So that was a great experience to see, especially from um, coming from small town Nebraska. Um, something that I learned that was really helpful in my work, and even my coursework, was um, attending the OCLC World Chair session, because our interlibrary loan is changing, and it seemed pretty daunting. Um, you know, we didn't know what to expect, and and just by meeting the people from OCLC, visiting with them, sitting in on what they had to say, it really. Um, when we did switch over here in the beginning of August, it made the um, entire thing so much easier not only for myself and Tina Walker, who is our area director here at Mid Plains Community College, um, but I think we, because she went to the conference also, but we were just so reassured that um, we were doing the right thing and and everything was going to be okay. <laughs> and it was, so that was really great. Um, a couple of other people that I met and connected with from Nebraska is Holly Dugan. Um, I believe she is a scholarship student, or she was previously, and she is located in Nebraska. And then Ashley Laborbo, and I may be butchering her name, but she is um, a librarian in Kentucky, and she's also a student, but works at the UK library, I believe, and I may have that completely wrong. But it was neat to... Um, you know, we have so many people, but those those are two that stood out to me. So, um, some suggestions or advice that I might have for first time attendees is to pace yourself. Um, it's really easy before the conference to schedule every single minute of your time, and while it's really fun to do at home, when you get there, it's a completely different story. <laughs> Especially with such a big conference, you have to be patient. You have to learn how to wait because the shuttles do take a little bit longer than maybe planned. Um, but it's a great time to network with other people who are staying in your hotel or other people who are just waiting in line. 
Um, and of course, shoes. Shoes are everything. And wear comfy shoes and wear what's comfortable to you. So, um, and I think, I think we all did that pretty well. So, um, one of the best things maybe was meeting different authors. Um, I had the chance to meet one of my favorite authors. And that was really exciting because I've read her works for years. And the line wasn't too long because some of the lines were super, whew, they were super long. But um, it was really great to, to experience that. And then just to be in Chicago. Um, while, we, while we were there, the Blackhawks parade um, took place. And I think they said that there was 2 million people that came in for that. And that happened to be on Friday. Um, and we had a couple of sessions at the, I think it's the Booker Washington Library that was close to our hotel. And so we were um, going against the crowd to get to this library. <laughs> and it was fun um, to see the enthusiasm and, and just experience their, their pride for their um, hockey team. And then on Sunday, the Pride Parade was there. And that brought in, I guess, a, around 1 million people were there for that parade. So overall, Chicago was an amazing experience. I learned so much. Um, and I feel like I've put into place a lot of what I've learned. Thanks, Guy. That sounds great. Um, what I do have up here was the one about the mid-level managers that you had reported on. I, just yes. to jog your mem memory, did you want to talk about how you may have implemented some of that now that you're back? Um, well, let's see. I'm trying to remember. Um, that was such a fun session because they had a little bit of role playing and um, if anything, it really gave me confidence to know that I'm on the right path. And like I stated in my Facebook post, anything that I expect of my staff, I will do it myself. So I, I put that into motion. I have. So it's just really reassuring to know that, you know what, I'm doing things right and, um, and I'm on the right path. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing with us, Sky. And um, at the end, if we have any questions um, to follow up or if anybody has any questions along the way, we'll be sure to relay those to you. Yeah, if anyone wants to know more about their experiences or anything, just go ahead and type right into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and we can um, pass on the questions to our uh, speakers. Okay. So we need to mute her, yep, is that right? I, I just did it, yep. Okay, and now we're going to be joined with uh, by Odessa first, or Kim first, whoever is handy. We've got you unmuted, Dave. What do you got there? <laughs> All right, we're good. <laughs> Who do we have here? That's Odessa. Oh, hi, Odessa. I'm going to pull up your, your report right here, and then you can also um, cover whatever else you'd like to cover. And just go ahead and take it away. Oh, yay. <laughs> um, I'm not much of a public speaker, but when I went to ALA, it was my second ALA conference that I was able to go to. I went to Anaheim last year. That was overwhelming, being that it was my first one. I didn't know quite what to expect. But going into this one, I felt a little bit more comfortable going to it. Plus, I had two coworkers that traveled with me, Dave and Kim, so that made it a little bit nice. Uh, nicer to be able to speak to them after the day was done, relay our thoughts from the day, things like that. If you don't have anybody that travels with you, I strongly suggest you try and network while you're out there because sometimes that just helps to kind of decompress for, what is that, for after, after a long day of getting your brain so filled with information, sometimes it's just nice to just kind of fill it all out to somebody else. And it, it, anyway, in my brain, it helps reorganize things a little bit. Um, a lot of information you get, uh, you walk around, oh, especially from the, uh, the, the exhibitors, oh my goodness, I saw people with like three, four bags full of like little giveaways and stuff. You walk away, plump shoulders because you're trying to carry everything that you're getting. Um, uh, like Sky said, wear comfortable shoes when you're walking, things like that. Um, be be prepared to go the distance. Be prepared to 
walk and at, at some of the meetings, some of them are so full that the, the rooms don't have enough seating. And I noticed that like at ALA, there was, or at this one in Chicago, there was a room and it was one that had a program scheduled from like 8 to 5, but they were like 15, 20 minute snippet programs that were really quick. Well, some of the people sat in the room all day long and when you tried to get in for your little snippet program, you were standing outside in the hall waiting for that one and then you could never get into the to sit down comfortably. So you got to be prepared to uh, kind of just go with the flow too when you see that. And I traveled on the bus to Chicago with the other uh, Nebraska librarians and that was great because we could network if we needed to. Um, I know that there was uh, a trial to put together um, kind of a review from all the librarians who were able to go. Uh, Jake was going to try and do that. Um, a, a downside that sometimes we may see when we go to like ALA and bigger conferences like that, if you're from a small library, and Dave was just mentioning this uh, just a few minutes ago, um, that when you go to these big conferences, don't get discouraged if you if you hear that their budgets are three times the size of your budget or something, um, take, the, take the ideas and implement them and try and reorganize them so you can use them maybe a simpler way or find a cheaper way to redo what they did. Um, I'm in library school right now and one of the uh, classes I had to talk, uh, I had to discuss with, they said what is great about working with libraries in the last the, the, the comment that I made was when I first started in libraries, and, it, and I don't mean to be getting off track here with ALA, but it goes hand in hand with that, is when I first started working in libraries, I wanted to hoard my ideas. It's kind of like I came from a retail world where you got the best ideas and you can't share it with anybody because then they might outsell you on something. But when you come into the library world, everybody is willing to share everything else and you can borrow and take and, you know, give back. and ALA, you meet so many people who are willing to just talk to you about things that they've done, maybe different ideas that you know, have run across. And so for me to meet just one person that inspired me from ALA is too hard to pin down. So I, uh, th there were so many people that I met. Um, so be open, try and go out and communicate. When I am in a new situation, I, I tend to clam up and I tend to turn into a shy Odessa. And, it's harder for me to open up and and communicate with those other people and network with them, but that is a big thing when you get into the conferences is to, to try and find people that you can sit down and you can talk to. There's always the networking, uh, the open networking centers that you can talk to. Other people just sit around and, and process the ideas that you're learning from the classes. What are some of the other questions? Kim's got the questions. I, I'm I don't. Um, something that I learned to apply, <laughs> there were so many, um, here it, it looks um, like it's been so long since I, and I don't have my ALA notes with me, they're back at my desk, but um, the, uh, the one program that I went to that was huge for me was they talked about different grants that they applied for to be able to afford the programs that they were running and to learn about those grants that I was not aware of before really, really was something because, you know, we're constantly searching for grants on how to pay for these programs and so for them to have passed that information on to us, that was beneficial. So even little tidbits, if I can't redo the program, they're going to have some information that you can take back with you. So. I guess, I guess that's it that I had to talk about. Um, Kim will take over talking now. Kim's nervous, so, but that's okay. She'll just ramble like I did. We're good at that here. Hello. <laughs> oh, no. oh, hi, Kim. Okay. We muted ourselves. <laughs> we hear you just fine. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Take it away. This is the first time I've done this, so I am nervous. Um, going to the ALA in Chicago, for me, being, um, well, a library science student, and somebody relatively new to the field of library science was so extremely eye-opening. 
I, I bet I spent the first couple of days just kind of in awe of the entire experience because not only was it just gigantic, but there was just this whole world of information laid out before me um, for me to explore. And so something that I learned that surprised me was um, basically it did surprise me to hear the budgets that other libraries had because sometimes you just get caught up in your own library that you're working at and you forget that there's all these gigantic libraries out there and they have huge amounts of money. And so it surprised me when they were talking about their programming, programming that they did. I, I specifically centered myself on adult programming ideas. Um, and so it surprised me that they had such large budgets. And then at the same time, I took it as a challenge to see if there was any way that, you know, we could incorporate the ideas that I was hearing about at our own library um, with the budget that we have to work with. So um, something that I learned that I could apply to my work was that I needed to put myself out there with ideas, no matter how, like, and not worry about how somebody else is going to perceive my ideas. And trust that in the environment that I'm working in, that the people are on the same page with me and they want the best for our community. And so even if my idea is a little off the wall, which sometimes they can be, um, that together we can collaborate together and we can make we can bring it to something that's workable within our, our framework of our library. Um, I did meet, besides Sky, actually, I did meet Sky at AOA. Um, I also met a lady on the bus uh, from Texas who was the director of a library there, a very large library, um, and she just I, and I I just started I just struck up a conversation with her because to me she just looked like she was so relaxed and just really enjoying herself and um, and it was really neat to to get to talk to her and I'm glad that I put myself out there and started the conversation with her. Um, I can't remember her name because I am terrible with names, but um, if you do something that I consider memorable, I'll remember your name right away. But other than that, I'm, <laughs> I'm terrible with names. Um, <clears throat> anyways, the best advice that she gave me in our conversation was that she said, you know, because I asked her as a new librarian in the field, what type of advice could you offer me? And she said, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Um, and ask questions and go to conferences and network and things like that. So, and I think that was my second day that I had that conversation with her. And so from that point on, I just started talking to anybody and everybody. And I thought, well, what's the most they can do? <laughs> Say, hey, we gotta go pick up these three chotskis. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't have time to talk right now. But um, so I was really glad that I did. And, and her advice to me to put myself out there you know, it was exactly what I needed to hear because I too struggle with being shy and feeling like I don't um, know enough. But then I also have to remember that it's not possible to know everything all the time. Um, so I really, really enjoyed the experience. It just really gave me a lot of industry knowledge. It gave me a look at the gigantic picture of libraries and um, just all the um, just all the ideas was, were fabulous. Um, the suggestions or advice that I have for somebody being new and going to ALA would be um, remain flexible with your schedule because um, I spent time going through the the uh, program book that we were given and really looking at the things I wanted to, to attend, the, the, the presentations I wanted to attend. And um, what I found was, of course, there was two or three things at the same time, but that was okay because it worked out. Because if I went to a room and there was no room, and I mean it was completely filled to capacity with people sitting on the floor, then I knew that I had another program that I could attend. And so just to maintain remain flexible with your program um, schedule that you want to attend um, so that you can, you know, just, I guess, be more relaxed and, and don't get 
you know, don't be so uptight about, oh my gosh, I have to go to everything. Um, and I did really get some good ideas. So I just recently um, approached our director with an idea to do, um, or to try some adult programming um, ideas at our library that um, could apply to 50 plus um, adults. And uh, one of the ideas is to have library bingo, uh, maybe once or twice a month during the winter months. Mm -hmm. And then I think um, I'd like to also try to um, get together a group of people that would be interested in playing Bonko, and then perhaps a group of people interested in playing um, Cribbage. So that's um, pretty much all I have to say. I really enjoyed the experience, and I, I learned a great deal from it. That was a great presentation, Kim. That was just perfect. <laughs> you addressed all of the questions that I had for you and wrapped them up with a nice little neat little bow. And so I think that turned out just fine. Thank you. Yeah, you did great. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Thank I you. Have, this is Krista. I do have a, um, a suggestion for when you are meeting new people like that at conferences. I had to learn how to do this myself. I didn't do it as well either. I was really good at chit-chatting, like you said, with someone. And then, you know, and the next day I couldn't remember who the heck were, was I talking to and why. I try and get into the habit of having business cards and exchanging them right away when you meet someone, saying, oh, this is me. I work at this library. And then when I finish talking to someone, I'd immediately kind of go off in a corner somewhere and flip over their card and write on the back of the card what I talked to them about, like a shorthand thing of just, you know, we talked about well, like library websites. And then when I get back after, of course, a long conference and meeting lots of people and attending lots of sessions, I can look at those and remember, oh, yes, so-and-so is into this. Maybe I'll contact them about it later. So just a little tip for when you're meeting people in such a huge uh, place with so many people, yeah. <laughs> Super. Um, I Just circle around. Um, Sky, if you had anything you wanted to add after hearing from Kim and... And Odessa, is there anything, not to put you on the spot, but if there was anything that came back to mind for you that you wanted to add? You're unmuted. Okay, Sky may have had to step away from her desk momentarily. She's a one-man band today. So um, we're going to go ahead and go with Dave. Dave, I'm going to, I would like for you to please um, share with us basically if you saw a transformation between on the bus ride to um, Chicago between there and the bus ride back, if you noticed a transformation in Odessa and Kim, um, how you checked in with them periodically, um, what advice you may have given to them over the course of the days. Um, just if, if you, you know, as a mentor to them, having had experience with uh, conference attendance, what are your reflections on how it, you feel that it went for Kim and Odessa? Okay. Um, I learned very quickly, too, they learned how to turn their cell phones off so I couldn't get a hold of them. Right. <laughs> but um, the, the big thing, I mean, we always have had the philosophy here, any idea is a potential good idea. It doesn't even matter how weird it may be. And so we like to go with that. So when they, we first started talking about it, and our library does not have a big budget for going to conferences. And since they were students and got their way paid through the scholarships, that was why we had three people go to the conference. And so the big thing I can emphasize, look for those areas that you have interest in and then talk back and forth so we aren't all showing up at the same program at the same time. Because, you know, when you've got 25 different things going on, you should be able to hit three different things. And I think there was only once that two of us were at the same program. And the other thing is look at, like, an area that you have a lot of interest in, but also look outside of your comfort zone. Um, and this applies to if you're in an academic library, if you're in a public library, if you're in a public one, go to an academic program. Go, if you're in an academic, go to a public library. And see what the other places are doing, too, because you do come away with different ideas all the time on it. Um, since we've been back, and this is really, for us at the library, 
when people come back from conferences and they have ideas and things like that, all of a sudden you start noticing the other staff. And this year especially, I've noticed the majority of our staff are now coming up with suggestions on programs and different ideas on how to do different things. And so they've gotten away from, oh, I don't know if that will work. I'm not going to say anything to it or about it. And I've always been that complete opposite. Now, students that are out there, if you're at a library where you have a library director that isn't very open-minded for new ideas, you got to figure out a way to kind of get it slid in. Um, we have one staff member that works at another library, and they are so completely opposite thinking-wise to our library that they really feel intimidated trying to bring up ideas there because it gets shot down constantly. Where at ours, they can come in and say this. I say, well, you know, well, let's see what you can do with it. Run with it. Give it a try. And it doesn't matter if you're the circulation staff person, if you're the reference staff person. You come up with an idea of something that you think might possibly work, we'll give it a shot uh, if it will work for our community. And we've always had the philosophy, too, if you do a program, then you've just served at least one person in your community. You know, we don't shoot for having 35, 40, 50 people show up for each and every program. Um, but as potential students, you know, actually on the websites for ALA conferences, they have a little link, how to convince the board, how to convince your director that it's a benefit for you to actually go. It, it should be, I was trying to remember where it was. It was on first timer and it talks about it, when you go into there it tells how to make your case. Yep, steps in making the case. And as new people, you know, they always say, you know, uh, wear comfortable shoes. I also like to highly recommend look for shortcuts. Figure out the arena so you can get from one area to the other. Uh, the first day when we went there, this place was so big you had to walk literally the outside all the way around. By the fourth day, I could get from one side of the building to the other in about three minutes because I learned the little shortcut back routes and this escalator went here and go down there. And so I could have maybe five minutes to get to the next thing and be there in time for it to start. Um, the other thing is, like I said, step outside of your comfort zone. Um, and it's amazing who you may meet. I got to have a sit-down chat with the CEO of Mango Language. And we both sat there for a while, and I threw out the ideas that things that we've noticed in our community that mango languages could change to benefit our clients better. And then just the other day, they were doing a promotional thing again, and like talk like a pirate day. And one of the staff came up and said, did you go to that link and look at it? And I said, no. I said, well, go to it because your picture, our library, was the first picture on it because of the programs that we did with Mango Language. So, you know, you get your name known by some of these companies. Um, a lot of these places are very willing to work with libraries if they have an idea what's going on there. And some of them, really, they have no librarians on staff, so they don't know exactly, you know, what may benefit your clients. So if you give them ideas, you know, and don't feel embarrassed doing that. I got to talk with a couple of the head honchos for ALA without knowing who they were, and we just sat and chatted a little bit. And I even got to chat with Janice Ian, the singer and performer, one of the speakers after hers. I got to sit and talk with her a little bit. So, But we both grew up in the same generation, so we had something in common. Um, so just look for very unique experiences. Go with an open mind. Um, and like I said, we kept mentioning this all the time. Boy, what they had for the budget for that one program, that's one-third of our whole operating budget. And don't just then write it off, oh, we can't do it. No, figure a way to go around to be able to try and pull it off. You know, how can you do it without really having all that money to be able to do it? So. So that's kind of what, did I answer most of the questions that you were thinking of? 
Yeah, I think so. Um, just if you noticed any changes in Odessa and Kim over the course of the few days or anything to that effect? Well, they still have a hard time identifying things in the far distance. Uh, they, they wanted to walk down to Navy Pier from our hotel, and I kept saying, well, they like, that roller or that um, Ferris wheel, and you can see it right there, and I go, yeah, that's like 150 foot high. That's like two miles away. No, that's okay. We'll go. You want to go with us? No, I'm old. I'm not walking. Up. They got maybe halfway there and decided that was far enough. They turned around and came back. So they've learned an important lesson. Listen to the director at times. He does know things. Um, but, I mean, anytime you go to these things, and Kim especially, because Odessa had been to one before, and she came back from that one with a lot of ideas. Kim came back right away and just, she was like she was 18 all over again. Her eyes were open and she just, it was just amazing. You know, she was just really in shock. And after you've gone to a number of these and you kind of learn the whole thing, you know, that's the nice thing about it is you learn how to go to the programs, you know how to, you know, you don't have to go to every program. There was a couple hours where I just went down and chatted with the vendor and talked about different things. And, you know, when you talk to like a vendor that has a pr operating system that costs $21,000 and then you explain your whole operating budget is this amount, you know, what could they do in the future to make it cheaper? It's amazing in the years to come, something comes out that's designed more for the smaller libraries too. So, but yeah, you do see an improvement or a change in individuals when they come back from these conferences. So Dave, I think it's the confidence that we bring back. When I first went to ALA in Anaheim, before that, you know, I would take suggestions and things like that, but then I really started noticing I can come up with ideas and I can recreate this idea. And I noticed that with Kim as a co-worker of hers too, like she works at the circulation desk and I'm back in the youth department, but she would come back and she would say, what do you think of this idea? Do you think we could do it? And she kept, and she, she kept on it. She was determined because it was something that she was trying to recreate. And I think you see a lot more confidence in people that come back from the conferences that they can change something that they want to see a change in. That's, that's a great observation. Um, and Dave, one last thing. It, it, go ahead, Dave. Okay. It does open your eyes, too, because say you do see some of these very large libraries, and they're talking about their programs. You do a little research, and you realize, like, there's a couple of big, huge libraries out there. I'm really surprised how few programs they actually do for their kids, how few programs they actually do for their adults. Um, this year alone, uh, when I was counting up, we're going to be close to 1,500 programs that we will do in a year at our library. And I looked at another one library that is probably about three times our size and they do one-third the number of kids programs and one-third the number of adult programs and don't offer any technology classes at all. And I'm like, okay, well then we're doing something evidently right. We've got that, what I call the new philosophy of what libraries are. And this is Kim, and I just wanted to add that, you know, from a professional standpoint and also from a personal developmental standpoint, I really felt like I came back from the ALA conference with a renewed confidence in myself and in the fact that um, I really could do this job. I really could, um, you know, help people and I really could um, benefit my community in the position that I'm currently in. Um, and so it was, it was just such a great feeling to know that um, it just kind of helped reconfirm that I'm on the right path. And so I really appreciated the experience. Well, we're so glad that you all could go. I just want to um, circle back to something that Dave mentioned and also uh, Odessa hinted at. And I think that that is um, when you're networking and when you're meeting new people, um, when you're speaking with vendors, that you have an elevator speech. 
In other words, that um, you know your library and that you can you prepare yourself in advance and do your homework. Um, this is the population that we serve. This is the number of people that we serve. This is our budget. This is what we have to work with. Dave mentioned that he knows exactly, well, give or take, how many programs that you offer per year. Um, this is uh, what I, uh, this is the integrated library system that we use. Um, just some different things like that so that you know your library pretty well so that when you do meet with a vendor, you're talking the same language, and I think that's really helpful. And Odessa, you had mentioned that you noticed that there, <clears throat> some libraries' budget was about three times your budget. Well, that means you knew what your budget was to start with, and that helps you have an informed and intelligent conversation with other librarians. So that, that's, you know, a, a tip that I'm just hearing right now between Dave and Odessa and um, the other the other students that attended is that if you're at a library that you know your library pretty well so that you're prepared to have conversations with other librarians. Yeah, the big thing, especially here in the Midwest, Nebraska, Iowa, you know, majority of our libraries are small. I mean, extremely small. And our library, size-wise, is compared compared to be a fairly large library in the state of Nebraska. And we're teeny tiny compared to almost everybody out there. I mean, we're we're the branch size of some of these medium-sized large libraries that are out there. So for us, you, you really have to be creative, and you have to keep emphasizing to the vendors and other people out there that there are a lot of us little, you know, five people, ten people libraries. You know, we don't have 150 staff working for us. You know. There's only 10 of us total. And so how, how can you get creative and do programming, and how can you raise money and do all this other stuff with 10 people, or five people, or two people, you know, that kind of stuff. Great, thanks. Um, Krista, were there any questions from the group that's attending today? Um, nothing had come in during. If anybody does, if you have any questions or comments or thoughts, if you've attended ALA before, um, please type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, and we'll get our speakers to uh, respond to them. Do we want to see if Sky is back? To... I was going to say, um, if no one has attended PLA, that's going to be in Philadelphia, I believe, this year. Or is it Indianapolis? Maybe. Well, I don't remember exactly. It's in Indian. It's in Indianapolis. Okay, that's a very good one to go, especially if you're don't want to be in the super gigantic. I mean, it's maybe about half the size of ALA. And then the Association for Rural and Small Libraries is having their conference this year in Omaha, so it's very convenient in the Midwest here. And it's actually coming up in about two weeks. It's the 25th through the 28th. And Nebraska Library is involved quite heavily in it. A lot of libraries are doing things here in the Midwest to help run it. So. Are you going to that? Yes. yes. I don't get to go this year. I'm speaking on Friday. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Um, Sky, did you? Are you there, and did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no. Okay. I'm sorry. What did you say? Okay. Sounds like we had an ultrasound just now. <laughs> so... Okay, well, then we're, I think we're good to go. Um, Krista, did you want to wrap things up here? Um, okay, we'll need that. Yep. Just okay. thank everybody. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, that was great. Some very good insights, I think, and um, hearing about, I, I've been to ALA years ago. I used to go. Um, I haven't been in a while, but yeah, I can. It, it's a huge conference, yes, and it can be very intimidating and overwhelming. Um, I like some of the smaller ones too, like Dave was mentioning. I've never been to PLA, but ARSL, um, things like, of course, NLA, um, other conferences that the commission gives um, 
we can get discounts to as well, and I'm sure you could go from the scholarship, things like computers and libraries or internet librarian if you're involved in that kind of thing at your library. Those are also most much smaller um, conferences um, on specific topics. And but. NLA and SLA is coming right up. Yeah, NLA, our NLA and SLA conference is in the beginning of October in Kearney. Yeah. <laughs> and next Next year it's up in South City. Next yes, year next year we'll be up to South City with um, Dave and Odessa and, and Kim. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so thank you everyone for being on the show today and um, for attending. I think it was a great session, lots of great info. Um, wait, can I do this? Oops, I think. And um, so that will wrap it up for this morning's show. It has been recorded, of course, so it will be available for you to um, listen to later. Um, I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is libraries in search engines, search engine optimization, SEO for acronym in libraries. Um, something you may have heard about might not know how to do it. I know I don't really know much how to do it. It's going to be our techie show for the month. Um, normally, Michael Sowers, the technology innovation librarian here at the Library Commission, does a monthly tech talk. This month, he was booked too much for other things going on. ARSL, he's going to be at. Um, he's out doing training this week, actually. He's doing stuff next week. So instead of having him actually on, we still do have our techie of the month, um, which um, Jason Clark, a friend of ours from um, Montana State Library, State University Library, will be coming on to tell us how to uh, optimize our search engines and get people coming to the library's website and promoting and marketing that more. So I hope you'll join us next week for that. And Encompass Live is also on Facebook. If you are a big Facebook user, please do go ahead and there we go. Like us on Facebook. Um, we post announcements of when our shows are happening, when our recordings are available. Um, as you can see here, we post a reminder on the morning of a show that people can just log in on the fly if they want to, if they didn't register ahead of time. So if you are um, a Facebook user, definitely go ahead and like Encompass Live on Facebook and be keep up, up with what you're doing. Other than that, we are good for today. Anything else, Catherine? You're good? All right. So thank you very much for attending this week's Encompass Live, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.